Hello there, fellow monster hunters, and welcome to The Witcher Bestiary. This is a series where we go and describe in some detail the creatures and entities of the Witcher universe. For today, I wanted to get started on yet another category of Witcher monsters, which was definitely beckoning to my lore sensibilities. Now, you all know how some monster categories in The Witcher tend to get quite convoluted to the point where one can't even tell the difference between a banshee and a wraith. Damn amateurs, right? I am of course joking, as, like many of you, think that the monster variety is one of the best aspects of the Witcher setting, since it does also put on display the knowledge of Geralt, as opposed to the ignorance of most other people he meets. Back to the topic at hand though, today's is rich, but fortunately not as convoluted as the Spectres or the Draconids, for example. And that topic, like the title says, is the Harpy and the Siren. If you're wondering why I put these two together, it's because they both belong in a wider category called Hybrids. Hybrids, in case it's not self-explanatory, are creatures that possess traits out of two or more different creatures or animals. Centaurs, for example, is a great hybrid creature. But then again, centaurs do not exist in The Witcher, as far as I know anyway, but we do have harpies and sirens, so here they are. We also have manticores, griffins, and even sentient monsters like the succubus, which also count as hybrids, but all those belong in a future video. The reason I'm telling you all this is because both the Harpy and the Siren families belong to the hybrid category, but they are not the only representatives. Moving on to the actual topic now, there's a good deal of variety to both these creatures. The Harpies have at least two more subspecies called the Erinia and Celano. The Sirens also come in a second breed called the Echidna. So, you want to learn about Harpies. Then, let's get you educated on Harpies. The very first Harpies from the games actually appear in The Witcher 2, and oh boy, there's quite a few of them, especially in Chapter 2 of that game if memory serves. Their appearance is fairly reminiscent of the classical Greek mythology Harpy, with the body of a woman and feathered wings. However, whereas the Greek mythology harpies were similar enough to women that can even be described as attractive, these harpies are utterly monstrous. If not for their humanoid bodies, anyone would consider them an animal or a monster. The journal entries on them from both The Witcher 2 and 3 are, fortunately, quite meaty and informative. To quote, Some are repulsed by rot fiends, others cannot stand tales of bull wars. But I find harpies, beasts of ugly temper and penchant for thieving, the worst of all. Fortunately, harpies prefer wild, mountainous areas, full of rocky ledges where they can build their nests. However, they always establish themselves close to a human settlement. This is done for the simple reason that they wouldn't be able to steal much from animals. There are many species of harpy, and all of them are kleptomaniacs although some do not steal baubles, but dreams instead. They especially like dreams laden with strong emotion, such as nightmares that occur again and again. The harpy's victims lose such dreams, which is actually a blessing in case of nightmares, and the beast enclose them in crystals, creating items radiating powerful magic. Mages desire the dreams stolen by a harpy, so much so that they breed their own harpies in order to filch their booty at daybreak. Yet it is rare for a stolen dream or nightmare to be powerful enough or to come from a powerful enough creature to ever satisfy a sorcerer. As winged creatures, harpies attack quickly, from a great distance, before their prey can notice them. After landing a blow, they flee to a safe spot. Pinning them to the ground and denying them flight is often the only solution. Thusly incapacitated, they become as clumsy as a hen. Stunned with a bomb, hit with Igni or the Ard signs, the beasts can be easy to kill, especially with the fast fighting style. The harpy's greatest strength is their ability to fly, but they can be grounded with the use of a trap. Because of the creature's wings are feathered, they can easily be set aflame, so using the Igni sign against harpies always has good results. 
These beasts have an excellent sense of direction and balance, and even when flailing around they can easily regain the sky, so attempts to knock them down are doomed to fail. It is hard to say what is most repulsive about harpies and their cousins, the Shishigas. Their hideous appearance, the overwhelming stench of rot and bird excrement that clings to them, or their blood-curdling cries. Suffice to say that even rats, who dwell happily among the rankest fecal matter and rotting waste, give these nests a wide berth. Harpy nests are often found atop high cliffs or rocky ravines. Sure signs of having strayed close to one are crumbling human and animal remnants, guano-streaked rocks, and feathers littering the ground. Harpies and shishigas hunt in flocks consisting of a couple up to 20 individuals. Although rather cowardly and cautious, harpies fiercely defend their nests and will not hesitate to attack when outnumbering the enemy. During combat they will use their ability to fly and dive, quickly to strike at their victim before soaring back out of rage. They can kill with their wings or their sharp beaks and talons. Once on the ground, they move slowly and clumsily, and thus no longer present much of a threat. Now, before you ask, no, there is no other info on these shishigas I mentioned. The only thing we know about them is that they're a variety of harpy. But looking a bit more into it, I discovered it to be a creature out of Russian folklore. There it does not have wings, and has more in common with a mischievous goblin, harassing and bringing bad luck to drunkards. Celano harpies also don't really have much lore, but it is said they are the most intelligent of their kind. Probably worth noting that Celano is also a named harpy out of actual Greek mythology. Meanwhile, Erinias are the second major type of harpy, and fortunately the Journal of Witcher 3 does cover them. To quote, Hard as it is to imagine, the Arrhenias found in Skellige are even more repulsive and dangerous than regular harpies. Although well-rotten carrion is their food of choice, they will not turn up their noses at fresh meat either, man flesh included. When they spy a potential victim, Arrhenias, just like harpies and shishigas, will try to make full use of the strength of their numbers and their ability to control the skies. They will circle above their prey, then attack from multiple directions at once, striking with razor-sharp talons and tearing their targets to shreds. While attacking, they aim for the neck, the eyes, and other vital organs, often causing their prey to bleed to death as a result. In this way, a small flock of Erinias is able to make quick work of much bigger and better armed victims, who often are not able to defend themselves properly from several opponents attacking at once. Now that all of you are much knowledgeable about harpies, let us take a more detailed look at how one can fight them properly. Speaking from personal experience, harpies are not that big of a threat, unless you just stand around and do nothing. I would say they are more annoying than an actual menace, like a griffin for example, since they do both belong in the hybrids category. Of course, no lesson on how to fight monsters is complete without mentioning the Witcher blade coatings. In this case, it is called hybrid oil, and it is made out of dog tallow and petals of white myrtle. Harpies, Erinias, and all their varied subspecies do favor flying and hunting in a pack. That can either mean two or three of them, up to twenty or more. One should approach a nesting area with extreme caution. When provoked, harpies and Erinias will begin circling from above, swooping either alone or in groups of two or three. If they are grouped close enough during a dive, you can catch multiple of them with a bomb, or the Ard sign. Igni is also quite effective, as it is able to light them on fire and bring them out of the air. Like many flying creatures, a bolt out of a crossbow, or a good blast of Ard, is enough to ground them. They can also be knocked out of the air with a well-timed counterattack. The bomb Grape Shot is very useful, but one should be mindful of that one's blast radius. Erinias are known to be more vicious than their harpy cousins, able to cause particularly bleeding wounds. I did mention them being annoying earlier, and I didn't say that's because they're particularly dangerous or difficult to kill. It's just that you need to get them down in order to kill them. And when you gotta fight groups of three or four or more of them on a regular basis, 
it does become a bit tedious. This also applies to sirens, so I'm mentioning that aspect here, so I don't have to repeat myself later. On the bright side, by the time you finish The Witcher 3, the Skelliger region especially, Geralt has already committed a genocide against this kind of monster. The second major topic of today are the sirens. Ironically, when I first played The Witcher 3, for a good amount of time after seeing and fighting these, I genuinely thought they were harpies. I mean, they do behave quite similarly to harpies, and you gotta fight them in the same manner. So imagine my surprise when I went into the journal and saw that they're an entirely different creature. After learning that, I gotta say I actually like the sirens a bit more than the harpies. They do have a more original aesthetic, if nothing else. The Witcher 3 journal has more to say about them, so to quote. Like skilled hunters setting out wooden ducks to lure in drakes, sirens and lamias lure men near, using their own bodies as a decoy. They can transform to resemble beautiful human maidens, although with tails covered in silver scales instead of legs. Once a naive sailor gets within arm's reach of these beautiful creatures, their fair faces suddenly turn to fang-filled, fish-like maws and lovely tales promising unknown delights become sharp, death-dealing talons. One legend claims sirens and lamias were once upon a time friendly towards man, and supposedly were even known to accept some sailors' clumsily attempts at courtship. In our day, however, they are incredibly aggressive, maybe soured by the many kidnappings carried out by frustrated seamen. Whatever the truth, one thing is certain. These days, the monsters display no sign of goodwill whatsoever, so when spotting them, one should immediately reach for the silver sword. Sirens and lamias, which are a more dangerous variant of siren, usually hunt in flocks, making use of their numbers as well as of their ability to move effortlessly through water and air. On the ground, however, they are pretty much defenseless, so a good tactic is to damage their wings and force them to land. The Igni sign is also effective when fighting them. A threatened or an injured siren will let out a terrifying shriek though, and it can leave their opponent stunned while they escape, and then their sisters swoop out for an easy attack. Appearance-wise, you can think of them as a variant of mermaid, but with wings. Leathery wings, that is, not feathered ones. The ways for fighting them are pretty much the same as for harpies. You can use bombs to stun them, the art sign or bows and crossbows to down them, and then it's easy butcher's work. As the journal also says, one addition from fighting harpies is that sirens can stun you with their shrieking. Although the aforementioned Lamia doesn't actually appear in the game, as far as I know anyway, there is another breed of siren also called the Echidna. Doubling down on Greek mythology, in case you didn't know, Echidna is an important character there, a half-woman, half-snake creature responsible for the birthing of a lot of the monsters from Greek myth. The Echidnas in The Witcher, though, are pretty much just upgraded sirens. They are somewhat bigger, stronger, and more bestial in appearance. It is also probably worth mentioning that you can both find and fight sirens over land and sea. Over sea in particular, they are a bit of a pain in the ass. An interesting named echidna was the one called Melusine, and to quote from Geralt's adventures, In the mountains near the village of Svorlag in Skellige lies an enormous complex of caves. For many centuries they were given wide birth on account of the bloodthirsty echidna known as Melusine who had made them into her lair. Melusine was a beast so powerful some islanders even worshipped her as a semi-divine being. The Witcher, however, harbored no such delusion. He knew she was an extremely powerful monster, but a monster all the same. This meant she could be killed. To do so, he would need the highest quality bolts, a solid silver blade, and a steady hand. Of course, you don't have to take my word for it, you can just watch it for yourselves. Nils, gotta be. Some monster dropped him from high up. Brit wasn't lying.
And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell and show you regarding the largest branch of the hybrid creatures from the Witcher setting. Now, regarding things like the succubus, which, by the way, is quite different from the traditional succubus, I'll probably make a video on sentient and reasonable creatures at some point in the future. Nevertheless, what about you? What are your thoughts on the traditional harpies and the more exotic sirens from The Witcher? As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts and questions on the topic in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode, do try to support the series by watching, commenting, liking, sharing, and even maybe checking out the other videos in the playlist. May the blessings of Melitale be upon you.